Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, May 9th, 2024 Town of Monroe Planning and Zoning Commission special meeting. It is now 7.04 p.m. If you'd please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll uh, now call the roll, starting on my right. Dominic Smirglino, alternate commissioner. Dominic Benicio, alternate commissioner. Ryan Condon, commissioner. Leanne Ambrosi, commissioner. Bruno Maini, commissioner. Robert Westland, commissioner. Nicole Lupo, alternate commissioner. Chuck Anders, attorney for the commission. Catherine Gallagher, planning and zoning administrator. Last batter. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, um, before general public participation, I'd like to add an agenda to uh, add an item to the agenda. You need a motion? Motion to add an uh, item to the agenda. Second. Uh, just a quick clarification. We are trying to remove 707 Monroe Turnpike from the site development plans and subdivision plans. And we, I'm requesting that we add a discussion of the municipal exemption under the zoning and planning matters. So I'd like to make, to make a motion to add discussion of the municipal zoning exemption to the agenda. Second. Motion by Lupo and second by Dominic. Dominic. Smirgliano. All right, so uh, we will add that for later. Next, we'll go to general pu public participation. <clears throat> if there's anyone here tonight that would like to address the commission, on any item not on the agenda tonight, this is the time to do so. Please um, raise your hand if you're online or in person. Uh, public participation is for the general public to ask or bring items to the attention of the commission that are not on the agenda. Please raise your hand if you have would like to participate, have questions, I see none, then we'll move along. First public hearing is the site development plan, subdivision plan, which has been removed. Um, in its place, we're going to uh, discuss the, um, what you have in front of you. I would like to do that actually at the end. If we can go, oh. I apologize, I apologize. If we can go through the regular agenda items, I think that's more appropriate to be done under planning and zoning matters under other business, um, and we can talk about it at that time. Okay, then we do have, uh, this, that's, we're going to close the public hearing then. There's no other public hearing. There are, there are no public hearings on right. for tonight. Um, the next thing on the agenda is under deliberations. Right. Under deliberations, we have SCP 2023 11, file 16598, 139, 141, and 201 Turkey Roost Road and 30 Codwells Hill. Road. Um, we reviewed this application uh, last meeting. And we uh, directed staff to draft a um, approval with the um, what the change that we wanted to see, the requirements uh, that we wanted to see, which I believe she has done. Uh, hopefully, you've all been able to read it. Um, at this point, I guess I'd like you to go over the most salient points, and then we'll continue with our deliberations. Uh, so the draft agenda was circulated out. Um, I would like to start with the conditions of approval located on page five. Um, the agendas that are at your seats tonight do have a couple minor, minor items that have been changed. Those are highlighted in red. Um, those came from discussions about um, how to address the unique situation of there are several phases associated with this project that were proposed. So we wanted to make sure the wordings reflected that, as well as there are both improvements occurring on site, as well as off site associated with the um, water main installation. And so there was some clarification that was made that um, some of the um, crushing um, materials and things of that nature that was being done on site. The conditions had noted about it staying on site, but really it can stay on site or be used off site 
only in the items that are approved under this um, under this application. So you'll see some of those items um, in red. So I'd like to go through each one of the conditions, if that makes sense, and see if there's any yeah. comments on each. Is that how you like to proceed? So page five, um, the first one is adherence to the town engineer's report dated 4-16-2024, including the posting of a bond in the amount of $177,600. The second is as specified by the applicant, the project shall be served by public water supply. The site may similarly be supplied by other public utilities, which may be required to be installed under if within the travel way of Turkey Roost Road and other town streets. The permittee shall, upon the completion of all such service installations, restore and repave, in parentheses, overlay applicable portions of the town streets, including Turkey Roost Road, based upon the recommendations of the Department of Public Works, based upon the work completed as described in subsequent street opening permit prior to the start of construction. Such overlay of town streets shall meet the standards of the public works department. That's just summarizing um, how to handle the installation of the water main and any other associated uh, utilities that may be acquired once they continue with their permits. Should the development of the site be completed in sections or phases other than described on sheets D1 and D2, the developer shall convey the information to the P&Z department prior to the initiation of work in a form of a plan clearly delineating the section lines. Sections used for sales and marketing shall coincide with those filed with the town. No arbitrary deviations shall be permitted. That has to do with um, some of the phasing documents. All road or site line approvals as determined by the Director of Public Works or Town Engineer shall be completed before the issue of any certificate of occupancy. Internal roadways or driveways leading to the town street shall be paved to a driveway point of access to a dwelling unit uh, before unit is issued a certificate of occupancy. Again, because some of this is being done in phases, we want to make sure that access to each one of those units is being properly done. No topsoil shall be removed from the site upon completion of either the section or the project, except if utilizing connection with offsite work proposed under this approval. Excess materials may be authorized for removal by the Director of Public Works, but only after determining the material and ex is, is excess and not needed for the completion of work. Six, the Planning and Zoning Commission authorizes a temporary construction and or sales trailer for the duration of construction subject to regulations, uh, section 1.9.2.E. Seven, fire hydrant location shall be coordinated slash located by the fire marshal and aquarium water company. Eight, a blasting letter will be provided to the 250 foot of butters within the two weeks prior to the start of blasting, providing a range of dates that blasting may occur and clearly outlining blasting a warning whistle protocol. Also nine, all sorting, crushing and processing of material shall be subject to the requirements of section 6.4.9P. Uh, all materials shall be uh, utilized on site. No materials produced uh, during crushing shall leave the site except if utilized in connection with offsite work proposed under this approval. All underground fuel or similar storage tanks um, and appurtenances uh, appurtenances shall they exist shall be removed from the site and a cert certification provided to the commission of such removals and um, disposition. 11, the emergency access road shall be plowed immediately following snow weather events and be kept free and clear of any obstructions for emergency access. 12, the developer shall designate six units that will be subject to deed restrictions that qualify for the units as affordable deed restricted units as calculated by Department of Housing pursuant to Connecticut uh, General Statute Section 8-30GK2, a unit subject to binding recorded deeds containing covenants um, or restrictions uh, which require that such dwelling units be sold or rented at or below the price which will preserve the units as housing for which persons and families pay 30% or less of income where such income is less than or equal to 80% of the median income where median income means after adjustments for family size, lesser of the state median income or the area me median income for the area in which the municipality containing the affordable housing development is located as determined by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. 13, with respect to the six affordable unit um, described above, the applicant shall submit an affordability plan consistent with the description of affordability plans described in section 8-30G, B1 and two, governing the sale or rental of affordable units. Such plan shall include an obligation for the applicant or the sale 
uh, or the sale or rental of the affordable units. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped line. Such plan shall include an obligation for the applicant or the successor's homeowners association to provide certification. Each instance a unit is sold, um, it's compliance with the income limits and sale price of the affordable housing deed restriction. 14, the applicant or homeowner association shall have the responsibility for the appointment of an administrator to ensure compliance with the income limits and sales price restrictions of affordable housing of affordable units and shall provide notice to the commission of the identity of the identity of such administrator. Such administrator shall provide a certification to the commission when any unit is transferred that the income limits and sale price restrictions required by the affordable deed restrictions have been satisfied. And 15, the unit numbering shall be coordinated slash approved by the town of Monroe's assessor's office. Um, that was added just based on a conversation with the assessor's office today. They would just like to see how the units are laid out in some of these bigger developments and make sure it is coordinated with that. Um, again, there were some other minor changes on page eight that is highlighted in red, um, as well as page 10. And those had to do with the uh, phasing, again, the clarification from those phasings. Um, it was discussed as well. Uh, there was uh, some requests by the applicants um, in order to have the CT deep approval for the septic system to be required prior to the construction of the units as compared to prior to site disturbance. Um, staff, myself, and the town engineer uh, did not want to necessarily change our standard conditions, which has that as part of um, the approvals required prior to any sort of site disturbance. Um, and especially for this project, uh, one, we thought that it would be a bad precedent to change our standards of conditions. We understand that the deep process, uh, approval process takes a long period of time. However, there is crushing and blasting associated with this project, and we didn't want to necessarily um, allow site disturbance to occur without an end date. You know, they have five years as part of this approval. We want to make sure that they're doing the blasting, the crushing, um, and then they're moving straight into construction of the units as compared to separating those two separate permits. However, this commission thinks that um, that's something they'd be willing to entertain. Um, I'm happy to hear a discussion about it and um, happy to comply as the commission sees fit. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, um, we go into deliberations next. Uh, we've, we've heard this project over the past few months, extensively. Um, and as we all know, during the past 20 years, the applicant has owned this property <clears throat> and he's paid a lot of taxes on this property. Uh, he's also improved this property. It was a quarry. Um, we've had a few quarries in town. He improved this property, got rid of the quarry on his own. We saw Turkey Roost Road um, studies, one of them that was uh, brought to us by the applicant. It was reviewed by our expert and uh, they came to the same conclusions that the road um, can handle uh, the increased amount of traffic. Unfortunately, there are going to be more school children brought into the system by this project. How many, we're not really sure, 80, 90, whatever it is. We can't use that as a basis or as a, really as a, part of our decision making on this process on this process because on this application because we're here looking at land use not um, education uh, the applicant reduced the number of bedrooms by 81 he did this on his own that was not a requirement uh, asked him about that. It's 20 percent reduction which is a significant reduction in the number of bedrooms um, so uh, not only that, but it's, it's well buffered, it's hidden away, and there's gonna be an additional 31 acres of open space, more than is required by the application. So in my opinion, we should proceed uh, with an approval on this application. Uh, that being said, any further discussion? So that's just the map member a matter of the seated members of the commission. Oh, so it's me, right? No. 
or the discussion. <clears throat> yeah, I was, um, like I said, I have a problem with the road. I also had a problem with, Chuck mentioned about how the septic system is, you have, is being used in two separate zones. And that, I don't think we ever did that in a town where we had a septic, the leaching fields in another zone. I mean, I think we had that issue down there with the, with the, um, the gas station, the gas station that was going across the water, and that got denied. And it was going to the water was going on. on. It may have been because it was yeah. not going down the thing because it was in a residential zone. The septic was going to be put on. And there was a river in between the two. There was a the river where the pipe was going through there. But, I mean, I think we set a precedence by, uh, I don't know why the applicant didn't want the king in front. I mean, I'd like to see that regulation that we had. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I'd be happy to review the issue. Yeah. Uh, did raise it. I raised it at the public hearing. The applicant did respond, and I'll kind of review the specific regulations that I think that are at issue here. Um, um, so there's I on the on this piece of paper. There's basically three regulations that are that we're dealing with. The first is section one point nine point three. That's the one that says when you have a split zone lot, which is this is, you have one lot, but it's split between MF and the RF2. It says that the part of the development, you, 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 you have to comply with the, the uh, zone that you're located in. So the development located in the MF2 has to comply with the MF2. This part that's located in the RF2 has to be comply with the RF2. That's basically what it says. It's uh, so that you, you, you yeah, that, that, that's, that's what that regulation says. And what we have here is the, uh, the, the, the plan itself is located in the MF zone, but part of the leaching field is located in the RF2 zone. So, uh, and those are structures, um, and, and the applicant agreed with that. So we have accessory structures, the leaching field, uh, on the same lot, but in part of the lot that's located at RF2. So that sort of begs the question, is that a violation of this regulation that says you got to comply with, with, the, uh, with the zone where the development is located? <laughs> the next, and when the, the, the developers, one of his principal responses is he points to section 1.94, and that's where that that's a section of the regulations that says no portion of a lot. I can read it in a residential district shall be used for any surface or subsurface principal or accessory use or structure on a lot or a portion thereof in a non-residential district, except subsurface lines connected to public utilities. So what this is saying is this covers split zone lots. And it specifically calls out when you can't have a septic or uh, other accessory structure on a residential lot. And that's when you have a, a residential and a non-residential. And when you have a, a split zone, part of which is commercial, industrial, and part of which is residential. And in that case, it explicitly says you can't, in that case, put the septic for the, for the commercial component on the residential side. So this is more specific? You said it. That, that, that's in the regulations. That's what the regulation says. So what the, the applicant is saying is that is how I read it is by saying, look at where you specifically say that you can't do that when you have a split zone commercial residential lot, that you can't put the septic for the commercial on the residential side. It doesn't say that you can't do it for split zone lots that are both residential. And so the implication is that that is permitted. That was what I, that's why, how, what I took the applicant's argument to be, that your regulation by, by saying that in the, reg, in the regulations um, implicitly authorizes the uh, septics in split zone lots that are residential, well, both are residential and these are, both the MF and the RF2 are residential, to, to you, you can have that on the other side of, of the lot. So uh, on the so the MF, the septic serving the MF could serve 
the be located on the RF2 because they're both residential under that regulation. That's his art. That that's the applicant's argument. And there's some basis for inference for that based on that regulation. The other regulation that I cited is is that's relevant. It's just a it's a general regulation that says <laughs> unless the use is specifically allowed, it's prohibited. And that's typical in regulations. That's why you, you can't just say um, uh, it's uh, um, yeah, I want to do it, and the regulations don't prohibit it. It has to specifically say it's an enumerated use. All of the regulations, by the way, allow accessory uses, and I'm considering the septic system to be a, 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 uh, an accessory use to this. So that is the, my, my, my understanding is that, uh, oh, the other thing you said is, look, we approved it the first time in 2007, and we did the same thing and you proved it then. So there is precedent for allowing the septic part to be located in the RF2 when we did this in 2007. And one response to that is that the specific regulation 1.9.3, and that's at the top, that's the, the one really that come into this particular regulation wasn't in the regulations that were in effect when you approved it in 2007. That split zone regulation, this, this showed up in 2013. That's why I was asking questions, what happened in 2013, right. whatever. So, so anyway, but I don't know, maybe this codified existing policy, I don't, I don't know that, I don't know what, what it was. So there is uh, an added feature that this regulation is in your current regulation it wasn't in the 2007 application. So the idea of a precedent that you did it before for this site, I, I can't say because again, the particular regulation that would govern this. So my take on this is that this is a judgment call for you guys. He's the, I think the applicant has given a plausible explanation of supporting his interpretation based on basically 1.94, that the fact that it marks out um, commercial that you can't do it for the split zone commercial residential. And that suggests that you could do it for split zone residential residential. Um, there, there were some other arguments you made. I, I, he made a distinction between accessory structures and accessory uses, but I, I didn't think that was particularly relevant because all an accessory structure is, is an access is a structure having an accessory use. So they are connected in accessory use and structure. So, so that that's your determination, and I we you know the the applicant did some research, look at other split zone lots. There is a lot where there is commercial residential, a number of lots, and uh, and he and he gave that in his in his answer, and he found a couple where there were split zone residential, uh, but in that case there was no evidence that any part of the development was located on the it, it was the ADD the. Uh, it, it was a higher, the, the age restricted was one. And I, I think, and, and part of it was an RF zone. And, but unfortunately nothing was located on the RF portion of the property. So you couldn't, I mean, they exist, but it, you, you don't have that, you know, anything is qualified. Yeah, put on so, so yes, that, that, that is my, I, I kind of throw it back to you guys because I think that there are, you know, you, you can have a plausible interpretation that it supports it. He, to to the, the reason you would say that it, it's against that ruling is you'd rely on this and it says, look, it has to be, uh, you know, it doesn't comply with that zone. You would make that ruling, although, excess, you know, septic system, septic leaching fields are allowed in both zones as accessory uses. But again, it would be serving the higher density use, which isn't principally use allowed in the zone. So I, 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 I don't have a definite for you, yeah, but, but that, that's the general. Uh, that's the, I mean, have we ever done this in this town at all? And then I, I could never find, I didn't find anything on this that were. I, I couldn't find, I mean, we, we, we looked other than this application, you did it in, in 2006, but I don't know if that regulation was in effect, but you did do it in 2006 for this application. Couldn't find anything. The applicant couldn't find any split zone residential lot where this had happened. And but but I don't know. I and again, there's there's a history. There's a lot of new staff. I'm new, so so there's there's a, you know there may be some institutional history somewhere, but we couldn't find it. I, lo I looked at I looked at, at zoning amendments to regulations. Have these things been tweaked a lot? And I couldn't find anything particularly that was helpful. 
helpful. The, the, the applicant really should have changed his own. The, the, the applicant could have. He, he could have he could have sought a zone change. He could have sought a text change that would make it explicit that the septic from one can be located in the other to clarify the ambiguity. But but he hasn't done that. And, you know, I you know, wh whether he would want to do that, whether you would approve that is a separate question. That's that would be a legislative determination. I just have one more one more question. I'm I'm just, on page five, you said that all roads and sight lines approval approvals are determined by the, the public works or the town engineer. So that means any sight line issues on the road or just the sight lines coming out of the property? Coming out of the property. So at that intersection, they just want to make sure that it's constructed appropriately so that there's no sight line issues in it. And you know, it meets their standards. All right, that's all I have for now. I have a couple of discussion. I have a couple, okay. couple questions. Um, one, I do understand that they're putting in some uh, affordable housing, but is that a, is that going to stay affordable forever, or is there a time period to it? Because in Trumbull, there was a big development that was done for affordable housing, and it's just expired and has become now not affordable housing. The intent is that it's not time limited. There's no time restriction. Where does it say that? Restricted. It, it, what, when it is time restricted, it says it. That, that comes from the statute to get an 830G. It has, I think it's 40 years. But I, I, I put in the language on the affordable housing. I took that out. And there's no, no, no obligation to do it. So it, it's, it's permanent. It, the restriction is, is, is permanent. That's the intent. And if the property is sold before construction begins and if the it's a bigger outfit. I understand that we have some guidelines in here, but how are, how does that work? How does it work with respect to the affordable housing? No, no, just purchase? just the, I know we're going to phase this or so-called phase this, but we've also run into issues in the past with phasing projects. And are you concerned that if it gets sold, that they're going to try to build all ninety nine units at one Correct. time? So there is something in the approval and execution portion of uh, the code 3.4.12 in order to ensure the orderly development by staging construction of an MFR district over a period not to exceed five years. Five years comes from the approval is, is for a five year period. The commission may limit the number of building permits issued in one year not to not over one third of the total number of the units approved in the overall site plan. So if you wanted to create a condition in the approval that uh, they cannot exceed one third of the total units, so if it's 99 units, it's 33, um, that would be something that we could add as a condition. But one third would be 33. It's still 33 units. And then it's done in three years, correct? They could, yes. But I mean, they get it approval for five years. Now, they did say during the process um, that they did expect it to take longer than that. Um, they have five years and then they can do another five year extension. I don't believe their intention currently with the team that they have right now is to do it that way. But that's the only um, real limitation that is uh, outlined in the regulations. Can we adjust that number? Instead of making a third, could we make it something different? I don't actually know the answer to that. I mean, it's 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 interesting. Just at the end of the day, this project, this project's a lot for this town. So, so I'm just concerned. It's a lot for this town on many, many, many different aspects. So I'm just concerned that what if it does get sold because now they have an approval and all of a sudden done in a year two. toll brothers comes in, they're not going to, they're sure the toll brothers won't come in here and, and be like, Oh, we'll wait five years. That's not how they operate. But I'm just saying, what if it does, I would like to have a safety precaution in there to protect the, the town as well. Let me, let me see this up. 
Let me look at the plans. I do know that they have some phasing information. Let me see what that exact wording is. And if that's something that we can hold them to per the plans, you know, that's something that we can do and maybe it, do a condition. So give me, give me five minutes. Five minutes? Sure. Last five minute recess. Where's the gavel? To gavel. Why didn't you bring yours at home? Mine's at home. You didn't bring it. You didn't bring the gavel. It stays here. It is now 7.43, and we are reconvened Town the row, planning zoning, special uh, meeting on May 9th, 2024. Okay, we were in deliberations, and we have some information from staff. So they do have sequencing on here. It talks about um, that they anticipate the construction to be done by 20. 30. So, you know, they're talking about potentially six years, you know, to be able to do this. Um, after looking at the approval and execution part of it, where it talks about one third, part of the reason it's there is to allow them still to be able to construct within the five years. So we would put a more strict limit, more less than a third, if we told them that they had to only do 20 you know percent a year they're not going to make that five-year expiration and we need to make sure that we are putting conditions in place that allow them to still construct it within the five years before their expiration ex expires so anything more restrictive than a third i think would make it potentially not possible to build because they still have additional permits to get they're still going to have to build the road and then they're going to have to construct all the units and although I think they've led us all to believe that it's going to potentially take more than five years and they will most likely need to get an extension, um, we still can't create a condition where they can't build it within that five years. Uh, okay. You're telling me 20% of 100, they can't build in five years? To me, that comes up to 100. But that would assume that they start tomorrow. They don't have all of their approvals. It's going to take them a year to get, you know, some of their additional approvals with DEEP and things of that nature. Then they're going to have to mobilize. They're going to have bonds. They're going to have to construct a portion of the road, you know. So I, I do think it's it's more the water line, have the water line installed, things of that nature. So I think they have a heavy lift um, on other things in order to prep the site in a way that they'll be able to connect some of these units to it. Okay. Any other issues, question or discussion? No. So to wrap. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just have a question for our attorney. I mean, we've heard, um, you know, in your description, we heard what the applicant's uh, attorney said, and, and we know what the regulations say and your interpretation of them, but what, what is your professional legal opinion on this matter? I, I don't want to let you completely off the hook here. I, I think it's a somewhat ambiguous regulation. Uh, and I, 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 you know, and I, 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 I think either one is defensible. And, and I, I think you need to look, it's not just this, you want to think of your own, you know, other applications where you may have applied it, what you think it, you know, what is good policy and be consistent. Okay, specific deliberation. You have any? No, everything uh, I said in the beginning. All right, so then um, shall I obtain a motion to uh, approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion uh, to approve by Westland. I just need a second. Second. And I have a second by Condon. Um, Call the roll standing on my right. Condon, yes. Ambrosi, no. O'Reilly, yes. Maini, no. Westland, yes. Motion passes three to two. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. Okay, now we'll move on to the municipal exemption. <clears throat> oh. You all know as much about this as I do. Frank talked to everyone. They basically 
I think he did a straw poll. So are we all good with this? Passing yeah. on to the town council a um, favorable opinion on this? Yeah, I do agree with that. So will you? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll, we're good with a favorable opinion on this. Do we have to vote on it? Uh, let's do it for good measure. We're going to do like a yay and nay. Do you not have to speak that? Do we need a motion? I, I'm going to say yes. All right. Why not? I'll attend a motion on uh, uh, moving forward with a. Um, no, no, I'll make a motion to put forth a favorable referral. Favorable referral. Thanks. Okay. Second. <laughs> Second to town council. All right. So a favorable referral. Um, Second. I'll call the roll. Standing on my right. Tom, um, yes. Ambrose, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Laney, yes. Westland, yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Well done. Uh, we have one new application, which we did hear a little bit about um, when we did the um, MDD, SDD. Go ahead and we have accept. an approved SDD. They have six months in order to submit a special exception permit. That is what's in front of you. It will be on for a public hearing at the first meeting in June. Um, do we have the minutes from 418? We do have the minutes from 418. It should have been in your last packet. Shall I a motion to accept the minutes of uh, 418 24? I'll make a motion to accept the meeting agenda minutes of 418 24. Okay, motion by Westland. And do we have a second? Second. Second by Condon. Um, any changes to the meeting minutes? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those against? Okay, it's unanimous. Any so, matters, none corresponding to Sun Chairman's report. I have none. Any commissioners' reports? I just I just want to say um I think everybody here knows um, on the 15th of April, my father passed and I just want to thank everybody for reaching out and, and uh, all your kind words. And, and it just meant a lot to me and my family through that tough time. Um, I really appreciate everything. And, and I can't thank you guys enough for, for your kind words, the flowers and, and, and everything you did and the constant contact throughout, uh, even still to this day. So I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Les, we do have a zoning enforcement officer report. I have my report if we can go through that first briefly, and then we'll have Thomas start to come up in the meantime. Go right ahead. Um, subcommittee meeting. Uh, do we want to schedule where was a request to uh, schedule a subcommittee meeting? Sure. Um, there's an item or two that wants to be on. We've been scheduling them on Mondays. Yay. So we have a meeting next week. So we have a meeting next so week we on have the 16th. On the agenda so far? Uh, I think so. Oh, you approved Turkey Roost tonight, and 707 is not anticipated to be heard on the 16th. So at the moment, I actually don't believe. Next week, the 13th. Well, the following week, 20th. With the 13th. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Kathleen? I don't know if they're, I, yeah, I don't know if they're ready. That may be too close. No. Might. Want to do the 20th? Um, yes. Yes. 5.30. 5.30 on the 20th. Do we have, when's our next regular? Next Thursday is our regular. Um, is the 20th the night we're at the delegate convention? Yes. Okay. Right, the 16th, we have to come early though, right? Yes. Rye. I'm not gonna yes. <laughs> Rye. <laughs> got a lot of meetings next week, fellas and ladies. It's, yeah. It's but if we don't have a plan, well, we're gonna have a planning in 13th. No, no, may not. I, think yes. I don't think we, I 
Based on how it went tonight, I don't think we need to. 205 is the upcoming application. It's not scheduled for a public hearing until June. So I think the meeting next week could be canceled. You'll let us know? Or do you want to cancel it? I think we could probably just cancel it tonight. And it's on the road. Make a motion to cancel the meeting on June 16th. So or May 16th. May 16th. May 16th. Canceled. Great. Next. I'm not coming on June 16th, though. Just, All right, so we're going to gonna cancel the second meeting. We got a ton of those. So we're going to cancel the meeting on the 16th. Well, we still have to come. Yes. Either way. Um, the next item is at the subcommittee meeting. Uh, there was conversations about doing a site walk at 1536 and 5064 Mon Road Turnpike in order to look at the uh, potential cluster subdivision. Um, application of that to the lot. Is that still something this commission is interested in doing? And do we want to have some preliminary dates that I can coordinate? They have an application back in or not? They have an application. No, they don't have anything in front of planning and zoning at the moment. Oh, wetlands? The next step is most likely to go back to wetlands, yeah. So in the meantime, but they would like to parallel process this simultaneously because I would like this commission's opinion on oh, how they goodness. are applying the cluster subdivision regulations to this property to see if this commission is let's schedule that okay uh what days of the week do you guys normally do site visits what time of the day would it be i mean it's a vacant yeah. site so it's really dependent on on you guys <laughs> yeah. evening after work yeah yeah 5 30 ish okay still light uh time time um, do you want to give me a couple dates and I can email and coordinate with everyone? Or do you want to just pick a... Why? I mean, is it possible to do it before our subcommittee like that same day? Oh. I mean, it just for me, it kind of it could work, works better. Yeah, they, they, they would like to be in attendance. Um, can we all show up? Like 4.30? Yeah. We just can't talk. I have to notice it as a special meeting. Yeah. And I would have to get their permission if there's going to be three or more people showing up. The public has to the public has to be able to attend if there's quorum. We have to notice it as a special meeting in compliance with the FOIA regulations. And the applicant has to grant us permission. And based on everything that has happened. Oh, you guys don't know this. There was a resident that trespassed on the property during the previous application in front of wetlands, um, illegally trespassed on the property. So the applicant and the owners are not um, there would be fine with the commission coming on, um, but they, I doubt, would be too keen on allowing uh, such public. a situation where the public would be able to access it. So if we were all, all to come the same day, it would have to be staggered. Correct. Is that going to be put under an executive session? No. no. What address is this? <laughs> 1536, 56, Monroe Turnpike. Um, it's potentially uh, eight, eight or nine lot subdivision. Um, Single family residential. What if we stay six feet apart? <laughs> I, don't, I think you're, I think you're go, say first of all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying the uh, same day was the 20th at 4 30. That's a, an option. Just throw it out there. Yeah. So I'll talk to them about the 20th. Um, what 30? And then if somebody has another time that they want to go, um, so we can start to stagger. Yeah, please let me know. And I think it sounds from this commission that we are going to try to not go as a commission and we are going to go individually or in groups of two. Okay. Beautiful. That's usually what we had done in the past. Right. Which, That's really good. Good. which is, so. is, is fine. Uh, actually, the um, CTD put out a really good um, summary of. of of site walks and things of that nature, what's acceptable and it, 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 that is acceptable. Um, we got an inquiry from a residential owner for a property um, where they would like to create basically a flag lot. 
there is a condition in our regulations that says that um, the town will entertain interior lots, flag lots, but that it has to come in front of the commission for approval. I don't necessarily have, and there's not like a strict um, list of like what the commission would like to see. So this is me inquiring to this commission of if someone were to come in trying to prove that they wanted to subdivide their property that would include a flag lot, what would you guys want to see? Obviously, you'd want to see a survey and a subdivision plan, but do you want them to prove out that both lots are developable? And if the answer to that is yes, which I would imagine it would be like, how far do you want it to take it? Do they have to do test holes for septic? Do they have to, you know, is it a, is it a true like full build out or you're okay with generally a conceptual plan? Yeah, we go through this at length. Well, the building department will require a set. We had made it loud. Yeah. So we just need to see. They it. would require it when a house is being <clears throat> built, which is going to happen. That's not, eventually. It could happen eventually, but you also want to make sure that you're not approving a subdivision that's not an actual buildable lot. So we need to see conceptual plans. At the very least, you need to see conceptual plans. But the question is, do you want them to test out septic? Like, do you want uh, them to actually? actually sorry, uh, health for subdivisions. Health will require. Um, test pits and septic designs in order to prove the feasibility for the lots. As part of their review of the subdivision application? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Sure. All right. So it'll be covered under that. What would the negative be if we approve the subdivision and it's not a buildable lot? They sell it and oh, someone can't build upon it, but you would hope that someone would do their due diligence. Yeah. So we're just protecting a future sale of a unbuildable lot. But, but I do the same thing. Like, like I can approve what's called a first cut. Like I can approve if there's a lot that's been in existence prior to um, the existence of our subdivision regulations, they're entitled to a first cut. So as long as they meet all the bulk standards, they can subdivide the property into two. Um, and I'm kind of the same way. Like if I don't necessarily make them do test holes for that just to do from one lot to two lots. Um, there's a little bit at their own risk, um, but yeah, they have to prove out, you know, a portion of that, but they would be coming to you. It would be kicked it into a subdivision category. So they have to meet the subdivision regulations um, for it. And yeah, like, like James said, I guess health department will look at it from that perspective. All right. We will be, we would be approving a subdivision then. Yeah. Because it's a non-conforming lot. They have to follow all the subdivision regulations. I have to, there's there's some specific language in there about interior lots. I'd have to look into that a little more um, clearly. But yes, I for the most part, yes, they would have to comply with the lots. Um, but they just wanted to know, does this commission basically entertain flag lots? Is that something that they've done? I've looked at the property and there's a lot of flag lots in the neighborhood. Yeah. So it's pretty common for like the design vernacular of the neighborhood. We had put it in a few years ago and I think yes, my memory sure. was it was we still wanted to one they weren't allowed originally and then we were like oh no we want to for no. sight lines and access we wanted to make sure we were looking yeah. at and then density I think. We would also a cul-de-sac. We didn't want to be yeah. a bunch of cul-de-sacs. Yeah, yeah, so that's why we still wanted to look at them and it was just, you know, yeah, just just like, make hey, sure. this is a dumb place to have a new driveway popping out or something yeah. like that. If they make the effort to do it, that it's something that the commission would entertain and has potentially. Yeah, we're not going to say no flag lots. But okay. just, you know, you can't tell us where it is first. You want to wait. Uh, it's 91 Wheeler Road. Yeah. Oh, and you said there's other flag lots. There, there are other flag yeah. lots on the other. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. I will get back to them. We have our zoning enforcement officer with us tonight, and he is going to give a summary of some of the um, larger enforcement um, items that are currently being reviewed from the planning and zoning department. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Thomas Noonan. I don't know if you guys are aware of that started on March 3rd, so we're going to do a review of March, April, and the beginning of May. I did include this. Um, your packets, you guys have it there. If you want to look over it, have any questions, please let me know. Um, we'll go right into it. 
So 136 Barn Hill Road, we received a zoning complaint form on 319.24 for blight. I uh, did investigations on April 23rd, April 24th, and April 26th. Found persistent garbage accumulated next to the garage in an air conditioning unit on the front lawn. And I also discovered that this was uh, the second zoning complaint form that was issued by the same resident for the same uh, house, 136 Barn Hill Road with very similar uh, verbiage in both of the zoning complaint forums. Uh, they pretty much said that the house was in a state of disrepair, that it was a complete disaster, and that um, the yard was so overgrown that bobcats were living there. Mm. That's why I decided to go out there and take a look. Uh, it didn't seem nearly, oh, no, oh, didn't seem nearly as bad as what the zoning complaint form actually said, but um, according to our blight regulations, uh, there was persistent garbage accumulated on the property and um, the air conditioning unit that was on the ground um, is also part of uh, the blight ordinance. So I sent a request for voluntary compliance on 429 regarding the above mentioned issues. And I also mentioned town code section 4057A7 uh, because the house could potentially be in a state of disrepair regarding seriously overgrown brusher shrubs or weeds at least one foot in length that may pose a significant public health or safety risk uh, pretty much in response to the potential bobcats or wildlife that could be living on the property. Uh, so I gave them 14 days um, to complete the work and respond to the zoning department. The 14 days is up or up on uh, May 16th. Get to talk to the homeowner? I did not get to speak to the homeowner, no. So 207 Barn Hill Road, a notice of violation was sent on 416 regarding our excavation and fill regulations. Um, this was uh, brought to my attention through our town engineer. Apparently he received a few complaints from uh, the, the neighbors of 207 Barn Hill Road that live on Bradley Drive. Um, we determined that there is possibility of changing the contours of elevation of two feet or greater resulting in having an adverse effect on drainage or of uh, adjacent and surrounding properties. Uh, the homeowner actually came in, the, the homeowner of 207 Barnhill Road came into the town hall on April 26th to figure out a proper resolution to the matter. He hired a land surveyor uh, to comprise surveys showing pre-existing conditions, current conditions, and proposed final conditions. And our intention of this is to figure out the best way to um, find stormwater management practices. So. Uh, it's not having an adverse effect on the neighbors on Bradley Drive because Barnhill Road is um, pretty much uphill from Bradley Drive. So all the rain and stormwater is kind of going down onto their properties. And now he did all the excavation. Um, There's really nothing to hold the stormwater back from kind of flooding Bradley Drive properties. So 216 Cutler's Farm Road, there have been ongoing uh, zoning compliance issues uh, dating back to March 30th, 2023. Uh, there was an original uh, notice of violation set regarding, I believe, five separate zoning violations, including the storage of commercial vehicles, storage of construction material, um, a boat that was stored within the required setback areas and not suitably screened, and there was a home occupation sign that was installed on the front of the lawn without a permit. Um, there was an order to cease and desist issued on 5-2 of 2023 for the same bump mentioned violations. 5-6, 2023, um, a violation plan was put in place by the tenant. Apparently, um, the individuals living there, they're not the actual property owners, or the homeowners, they're, they're the tenants, the homeowners, I believe, are the uh, in-laws of uh, the gentleman who is in constant violation of our zoning regulations. Uh, but he did issue a plan um, submitted to the former CEO, Cheryl Valerie, and a second order to cease and correct was actually issued on February 8th of this year uh, regarding I believe four separate zoning regulations, um, pretty much including the boat still being within the required setbacks, no 
suitable all year screening. He still continued to uh, store commercial vehicles on his property. And he's pretty much telling us that he's storing the commercial vehicles on the property uh, because he has open building permits to uh, renovate his garage and he needs these commercial vehicles in order to do that. Um, let's see, so he's in response to the second cease and correct order that was issued on February 8th of this year, the tenant responded um, with an email dated 228 of 2024 and stated that the current project um, had, like I said, he had open building permits and he would, should complete the work within 10 to 12 weeks time. So as of yesterday, uh, May 8th, 2024, that is the start of the 10th week. So yesterday I issued a letter to the actual homeowners um, saying that I need an exact date of when this work is going to be done and when these vehicles are going to be re removed from the property and that he's also going to have to schedule an inspection with the building official so we can close out these permits and not have these uh, commercial vehicles constantly in a residential district. Uh, I already spoke to legal counsel about this and if they don't comply, we're going to uh, issue citations for zoning violations, including uh, fines. Uh, for any of the violations that he continues to uh, not adhere to. 82 Hannah Lane, a notice of violation was sent on May 8th of 2024 for operating as a landscaping business within a residential farming district, RF3. Uh, first complaint was received on May 4th of 2023. Second complaint was received on April 3rd of 2023. And I spoke with a third neighbor yesterday, May 8th of 2024, regarding the noise and the amount of disturbance that was taking place at the property. Apparently, um, there has been a clearing of a lot between 82 Hannah Lane and the neighbor that I spoke with yesterday. And because all the trees and debris have been cleared, uh, the amount of noise that 82 Hannah Lane um, is conducting has really kind of become a nuisance to the individuals living on Hannah Lane and on Cutler's Farm Road as well. Uh, so I issued the notice of violation after I did some research, uh, seeing that there's no special exemption permit on file, allowing uh, the homeowner at 82 Hannah Lane to operate as a landscape landscaping business. And there's also no zone change application on a file, which would permit such a use as well. Uh, the business is listed as an LLC landscaping service through the st uh, state of Connecticut, and that was filed on February 23rd of this year, 2024. I believe he has uh, 14 days to respond to me uh, so we can figure out a way forward to not have him operate as a landscaping business in a residential and farming district. 909 Main, Main Street, um, during routine inspections uh, conducted on April 16th of this year, I found several potential violations of the excavation and fill permit, uh, EFP 2022-02. According to uh, the permit, the commission determined the need for the applicant to keep daily records of imported material. The applicant shall provide a log and submit the lo uh, monthly log to the zoning enforcement officer uh, to this date, uh, 4 9 2024, no monthly logs have been submitted. The 100 foot upland review area was not staked out in the field by a surveyor. There's been no installation of a two row temporary silt fence found on the lot, no uh, installation of a temporary sediment basin number one, temporary sediment basin number two, or temporary sediment basin number three were found. And I uh, sent a certified letter of with a notice of violation um, to the individual who uh, was the applicant for 909 Main Street. I have not heard back from them yet. 596 Monroe Turnpike, a request for voluntary compliance was sent on 4-2023 regarding landscaping and fencing causing sightline issues for traffic. The homeowner was given 10 days to contact the zoning department with a plan to remediate the situation the homeowner sent a letter to the zoning department on 4 27 2024 stating the sightline issues will be addressed 
and that 596 Monroe Turnpike is actually considered a certified wildlife habitat certified by the National Wildlife Federation. And that's part of the reason why she doesn't is hesitant, I would say, to cut back um, the brush and the landscaping from the fence. But that is causing some pretty significant uh, sightline issues for traffic. I have uh, received some um, residents have come in and talked to me about how it is an ongoing issue. Uh, so that's why I sent the request for voluntary compliance. She did not give me a date when she's actually going to do the work. So I do need to respond to her to get some definitive dates so we could uh, remediate the issue. 15 Oak Ridge Road, a notice of violation was sent on 426 2024 regarding blight, Article uh, 2, Section 4057A11, uh, significant and persistent accumulation of deb uh, debris bordering adjacent properties. Uh, this was a, in response to the neighbor at 228 Old Newtown Road. Um, 228 Old Newtown Road actually erected a fence on the property boundary of 15 Oak Ridge. However, the finished quality side of the fence did not face outward from the premises towards the neighboring property, which is against our zoning regulations. And so the homeowner of 15 Oak Ridge Road submitted his own zoning complaint on 11 15 of 2023 regarding the fence however um after the fence was erected the homeowner of 15 oak ridge road erected this barrier of junk and debris on his side of the fence to make it extremely difficult to flip the fence the homeowner of 15 oak ridge road has until 5 16 of 2024 to remove the debris allow his neighbor to flip the fence to get in compliance with Monroe zoning regulations. We also noticed on the property, uh, I went out and did an inspection of 15 Oak Ridge Road with our building official, John Morris, and John Morris issued a notice of unpermitted work to 15 Oak Ridge Road regarding a potential accessory dwelling unit above a detached garage. Um, the homeowner of 15 Oak Ridge Road did come in, I believe, yesterday or two days ago did admit that there is an actual accessory dwelling unit with a full kitchen, with a full bathroom and a bedroom in there. None of the work was permitted uh, by the zoning department or the building department. So we're gonna have to work with them um, to get, get rid of the ADU essentially. We're gonna have to uh, pretty much get rid of the stovetop and the oven and that will get them in compliance with our ADU regulations. Um, but apparently, um, the issues between 15 Oak Ridge Road and 228 Old Newtown Road are civil disputes that have been going on for about 10 to 12 years. They've gone to court um, with each other plenty of times. And uh, I'll stop right in the middle of it. They love each other. <laughs> they love each other. 114 Old Zor Road, a notice of violation was sent on 423 of 2024 for operating as a landscaper within a residential and farming district in RF2. Landscaping businesses are only authorized to operate in an I2 zone. After conducting research, I determined that there was no special exemption permit or zone change application on file which would permit such a use. The property owner was supposed to contact the zoning department by 5-6 of 2024 and it has not done so. I believe the homeowner of 114 Old Zor spoke to the first selectman uh, about the notice of violation that I was sent. I had a conversation with the first selectman. Apparently, the landscaping company does some plowing for the town. Uh, they've been operating as a landscaping business for several years. Uh, the father started the business. The son took it over and kind of expanded it uh, in the residential district. Uh, so knowing that, um, because the son, the current homeowner of 114 Old Zor, he didn't respond to my outreach and my letter. He went kind of above my head and spoke to the first selectman. I sent a second notice of violation yesterday on May 8th. And because I just want to create some form of communication with them, so we kind of get on the same page so I could see exactly what he's doing on his property. And um, I'm going to take it from there. But I want to have some type, type of communication with them. I don't want them to go over my head and just speak to the first selectman when I'm the one that's issuing the notices of violation to them. Look at you. <laughs> Lastly, we have 
479 Wheeler Road. A zoning complaint form was received on 5-2 of 2024 regarding a family living in a recreational vehicle that was parked on the main road with a generator that was running 24-7, causing the complainant to lose sleep on a nightly basis. An investigation was conducted that same day on 5-2-2024, and I found that there was a valid building permit, valid zoning certificate of compliance on file for the res renovations be being conducted at the house. And after conducting an investigation of the property, there was no generator that was found connected to the RV. There's an RV there. It's uh, 100 feet off the property. And that only um, one of the homeowners is staying in the RV while he is conducting the renovations to the house himself. What I heard from John Morris, our building official, is uh, the family used to live in Stanford. They put their house on the market, sold a lot quicker than they anticipated. And so they didn't really have anywhere to live while they were doing these renovations. Uh, so his wife and his two children, I believe, are living with one of the in-laws. And then he's living in the RV himself while he's conducting these renovations. And uh, the building department uh, told me that he has no issues with the homeowner staying in the RV while the uh, renovations are being conducted. And apparently he, the um, new homeowner for 79 Wheeler Road um, is pretty friendly with all the surrounding neighbors. They don't really have an issue with him living in the RV. Like I said, there's no generator attached to it. Um, apparently the resident who filed the complaint lives about two streets down from 479 Wheeler Road. So I'm not too sure how he's losing sleep over this generator that is not existing. Did they give a timeline on the renovations? Uh, no, but I could check with the building official and figure out if that is in uh, the building permit. Is there a question? You got to come up and name and record for this. Name and um, you, as, long, as long as you're okay with someone speaking. Yeah. Okay. Snyder, I'm at 210 Cutler's Farm Road. So I live next to 216. I filed first page. Okay. I filed initial complaint mm -hmm. February of 2023. Tom has been able to make some progress, and I'm deeply appreciative of what he's been able to do. But I've been extremely patient with this tenant that lives next door. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's box trucks, bobcast, mini excavator, cherry picker, boats, multiple trailers. And about two months ago, a tractor trailer with a roll off dumpster showed up and is parked there. And he works on it and grinds away at it and moves it back and forth, and what do they have? They have that emergency backup warning system, right? Beep, 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 beep. My, I live, I guess it's a flag lot, a back lot. He lives behind 216. So I, my, my driveway is parallel to the 216's southern lot line. And all of this garbage is parked in the corner of his yard. Not for him to see. For me to see every day and it's and it's maybe 20 30 feet from the front of my house that beep 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 drives me crazy i can hear it throughout the house grinding metal on the dumpster goes on for for hours at a time february 9th 2023 and at least two cease and dis desist orders Nothing happened with the first one. Sounds like there's <clears throat> some movement now with possible movement fines now. coming up. And yeah. he, he was given an additional 10 to 12 weeks when he had already a year. He's a bad, he's a bad guy. He's belligerent. He was belligerent to Tom and others. And I, like I said, I've been extremely patient, but I shouldn't have to live next. To what is now there's a, there's a garbage dump. He washes that garbage that 
that dumpster and works on it. Has people, I guess, from this company working there. This is Monroe. <laughs> this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't happen feet from my doorway. Right? And I'm so appreciative of the diligence Tom has shown to, to, to get something to happen. But it's it's been a long year and three months. And this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are other zoning violations. So uh, I, I hope it continues. Happy with yeah. uh, Tom. Extremely. And I hope I hope it continues. Is that day one, after 12 weeks, he doesn't come back and say, Well, I need more time. No. A year and three months. It's plenty of time. And it's based on a, a garage work needs needs that stuff to, to work on a garage, which shouldn't have been built to begin with. Thank you, Tom. Um, and I appreciate you giving me a few minutes to that. Thank you. I okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, hey, Tom, feather flags. Be you pulling those? Yeah. Because I'm now seeing new ones They're popping up. The There's ones with like They're body everywhere. parts and they say massage on that. Hmm. I haven't been pulling those. I've been pulling uh, the construction. And the, you know the temporary the feather the feather need to come off. Main, Main Street is horrible too. That's, yeah. that's yeah. Now they have body parts on them. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. We don't need a bunch of feet flying around on flags. That's what we got on 111 now. 111 we got on Main Street too. Yeah, right by the country people yeah. that uh, are Rosa. 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 Not country. Whatever. Ella Rosa. Ella Rosa. Rosa. Thank Thank you. Yeah. 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 It like popped up. It's like what is this? So yeah. Well, thank you for your yeah, no It's very uh, good, very complete. Something we've been looking for. for yeah, it's good to meet as well. Thank you. Yeah, welcome aboard. Okay. Uh, looks like you're here. Yeah. Welcome, Shelly. Oh, okay. Close by. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other business? I should. Chairman, I want to take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, my name. Second. We are adjourned. Right, who was that second? Rosie. Everyone. Pick one. Everyone. Anyone. You're called. Ooh.